Lights, camera, action! Well, friends, I finally did it. I sent my manager an email. Oh, you didn't know I had a manager. Yeah, let me, let me, let me tell you the story of how that all went down. So last year, 2021, I submitted my comedy horror script, Potter's Field, to the Nickel Fellowship. And you know, if you're into screenwriting and, and everything, you know that Nickel is a big deal. It's the big contest that everyone wants to win. It's uh, held by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. It's, it's like the top of the top when it comes to contests and you know things of that nature. It's very prestigious, is what it is. Now, I had no delusions of taking Nickel <laughs> with Potter's Field. But I'd entered Nickel before, and I did appreciate the feedback that I'd gotten with previous scripts. So I was really just kind of looking at this as like, all right, let me get a feel for what the industry thinks of it, and you know, let's see what kind of feedback I can get, whatever, whatever. When the initial announcement for uh, the scripts that moved on to the semifinals had been announced, I was not surprised. Potter's Field did not advance. But I was surprised to learn that it ranked in the top 15% of all the scripts that had been submitted. I mean, I was shocked because none of my previous scripts had advanced, or not advanced, but <laughs> I'd never been notified by like, you know, how well my scripts had been received by the nickel judges, the nickel readers before. This was the first time that I'd gotten anything that said anything like that. It's just like, you know, you, the email that I got pretty much said you barely missed advancing to the next round. So like, don't, you know, don't despair. Like, you know, you did really well. So I was pretty happy about that, especially considering that Potter's Field is, it's a very gory, <laughs> horror script. It's a gross out script in two senses. Gross out comedy, but also like gross out horror, you know, the violence and everything, but whatever. So when, you know, the announcement of the semifinalists came out, whatever, whatever, a bunch of like screenwriting managers who are on Twitter, they started tweeting out, hey, you know, I want to hear from the semifinalists, you know, hit me up, send me your script, blah, 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 blah. Well, me, I'm thinking, hey, <laughs> even though I didn't advance, I got close. So maybe some of these managers would be willing to, to read my script. So I hit up a couple of them, you know, and hey, you know, I, this is what the Academy said. You know, they said I ranked blah, blah, blah. Would you be interested in reading Potter's Field? And a few of these managers said, yeah. So I'm feeling good about myself. I send the scripts off and you know, is what it is, hoping to hear back, you know, whatever. Some managers got back, they were just like, ah, you know, this is cool, but it's not for me. Some managers just didn't get back at all. But one manager hit me back right away. It was like, oh my God, this is great. This is funny. I love your voice. And he asked the question that I have been preparing myself to hear, <laughs> which is what else do you got? So I'd already sent my horror comedy. And I was like, well, you know, I've got a couple of romantic comedies. The manager was just like, oh, that's, that's, that's perfect. That's great. That's, that's perfect. He asked about the romantic comedies. You know, I gave him like the, the synopsis, the log lines, you know, to both of them. And you know, he chose one and I'm not gonna lie. He chose the one that I like a little better. He was just like, yeah, you know, send me, send me that one. And so I did. Now this probably, this probably all started, I want to say in like late August, September of 2021. And, you know, I send him my romantic comedy and he gets back to me like within a week. Now this is like maybe like two weeks after my initial, this is like two weeks after sending him Potter's Field. So now within the span of two weeks, he's read two of my scripts. And what he tells me is that, you know, he enjoyed Potter's Field and he liked the humor and he liked the voice and everything, but horror is not really his thing. But the romantic comedy, that's a little more up his alley. And he said the same thing. He loved the romantic comedy. You know, he had some some thoughts about it or whatever, 
but he he really enjoyed it. He liked the humor, he liked the voice, he liked the characters and everything. And so, you know, he wanted to work with me on this. And, you know, he's also like, you know, including his assistant, you know, so they're both reaching out to me, they're emailing me, they're calling me. And in an early discussion with both of them, I was just like, hey, look, I've been in a situation where I've dealt with a manager and pretty much that situation, I was hip pocketed. And yes, y'all, this is the situation where I'm talking about my script and I wondered if my script got stolen and blah, 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 blah. I explained to this manager and his assistant, I'm just like, I don't want to be hip pocketed. Like what is, what is happening between us? What's the nature of this relationship? Please let me know. And they kind of talked around it, but I'll just say that the language they used was essentially like, we want to work with you. We want to work with you. We love this script. We want to work with you. We want to develop, you know, and they even said like, you know, do you have other ideas? You know, like what, what else do you have? And I mentioned, yeah, you know, I've got like another romantic comedy already written. I've got several ideas in my head that I need to hammer out. And I was just like, and I even come with IP, you know, established intellectual property. Like I have four fucking books that, that, that have been published. You know, I have a small fan base, <laughs> but you know, I have a fan base thanks to, thanks to these books. So I've got all that. So they're like, oh, that's, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. So fine. So with my romantic comedy, they give me notes, you know, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm rewriting, constantly rewriting. If you go back and watch some of my videos, you know, over the past few months, you might, you know, see me when I talk about, you know, yeah, I've got, you know, this rewrite, rewriting my romantic comedy. I'm working on a rewrite, blah, blah, blah. I was being coy because I wanted to, you know, I couldn't wait to kind of reveal that, yeah, I've got a manager and this is what's going on or whatever. You know, they're talking like this good game too, because like with the romantic comedy, they're just, oh my God, like, you know, we're thinking of who we can send it to, like Netflix. Netflix is all about romantic comedies. So, you know, we can pitch it to them or we, you know, if we're thinking like, you know, bigger or theatrical, you know, we can maybe pitch it to, to folks like Will Packer or Kenya Barris. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I was fucking stoked because I'm just like, yeah, Will Packer, Kenya Barris, like those are, not only are they folks that I would love to work with, that I would love to get my stuff to, but they're actually making material for the audience that I'm writing for. It's just like, yeah, like Kenya Barris, you know, people talk all this shit about Kenya Barris. I love Kenya Barris. You know, I love like Blackish. Um, I loved Black AF. <laughs> I don't watch much TV considered Netflix TV. I don't watch much TV, but I definitely like caught Black AF uh, that first season. I don't know if they're gonna make any more seasons because I think Kenya bounced from Netflix. But I'm gonna tell y'all, that show was my jam. And that's very much my type of humor. Very snarky, maybe a little mean spirited. <laughs> you know, can get raunchy, but that's my type of humor. You know, I look at stuff like that. Like Will Packer, like Will Packer is just, he's a legend in my book. You know, I remember seeing Twa in theaters. I was still in, I was in college when it came out. But I remember seeing Twa in theaters. And you know, even though it was a very small film, you know, like the theater was packed and the audience really responded to that film. And I, I still remember, I, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it for this, like, I don't know how old, 20 something year old film. <laughs> but at the end, when the camera pulls away from Kenya Moore, the entire theater just erupted, just ah, I remember that like it was yesterday. All that to say, I'm excited about all these prospects that my manager is talking to me about. I'm just like, yes, yes. So I'm working my ass off on these rewrites. I'm getting feedback from other people. I'm still sending it out, you know, to coverage services because I want to make sure that I get this right. I want to make sure that I get this right. In the meantime, I give my manager the pilot that I'd written that's based on my novel Guest List. And I also have this idea, as you know, uh, it's more like an action adventure comedy that I've wanted to, you know, revise and, you know, like whatever. So I mentioned that as well. I'm just like, you know, I've got another idea. So when we wrap up the romantic comedy, I want to shoot you my adventure comedy. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, cool, cool. So y'all, I worked on, I worked on the romantic comedy for a good portion of this year, last year into this year. And I don't know, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I remember sending him, I remember sending my manager this draft and, and he, and he gets back to me, we're on the phone and this is, the conversation is, is, it pretty much goes like, 
you know, Jay, you can write, but I don't, I don't know about this one. And he's, you know, citing the fact that like the main character of the romantic comedy is a woman. And I'm not a woman. <laughs> And he's just like, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if this is the story that you should go out with. I want you to give me something personal. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, okay, personal, personal, fine. I can, I can give you personal. And you know, it, it just made me think about some of the, some of the other comments that I got because in, in the rewrites for the romantic, and, and this is what led to it. Now that I think about it, this is what kind of led to it. In the rewrites of my romantic comedy, I got a lot of great notes and I really do feel like, you know, my manager like helped make the script better. But it also got to a point to where I felt like the story was kind of losing its way and the main character was losing her edge. And you know, this really shouldn't come as a shock, but my manager was a white man and <laughs> I could tell just based on some of the questions he asked and some of the notes that he gave that he didn't really understand my main character. Like for him, I could tell that he, he never encountered a person like this before, like in real life. I mean, look, I don't know what encounters he may or may not have had with black women, but you know, I based my main character on women that I know. I'm talking like my sisters, my cousins, my women friends black women who I know very well. And I understand like the world that they come from, their upbringing and like how they would react and respond and engage, you know, in certain situations. And I just don't think that, <laughs> I just don't think that, you know, my manager had ever, has ever encountered someone like that. So he questioned a lot of things and, you know, he, he, he gave notes about a lot of things. And I just, like I said, I felt like my main character was losing her edge. And so with the very final rewrite, I wasn't too happy with it. I wasn't too happy with some of the decisions uh, that I had made in order to fix the problems that they addressed. And so I told him, I was just like, look, I think that we need to revert back to like an earlier draft. I think that, you know, up to that point, you know, the script is very strong, but I think that some of the things, you know, decisions that I made to address their notes, I think that we started to head down the wrong path. They're like, okay, yeah, you know, okay, you know, that's cool, that's cool. And so that's kind of when my manager was just like, you know, I want something personal from you. So I was like, all right, you know, I've got something personal. I do have a story idea that's brewing. You want something personal then that's gonna be the next one. But I do have this action adventure script that I think it needs a little attention, a little love. So I did a rewrite of my action adventure, right? And then I wrote a treatment for the personal story. And I sent both of them off. And this had to have been, I wanna say June of this year, June, 2022. Sent them both off, didn't get any kind of response. I wasn't worried at first. I was just like, well, you know, people get busy. Like this is, you know, this manager, like this is not like some kind of like basement dwelling manager, you know, like this dude has like real clients and, you know, projects in the works and everything like that. You know, he is the real deal, which was another reason why I was very excited about working with him. So I was just like, all right, you know, I know he's, probably busy, like whatever, whatever. I'm not, I'm not too worried. And then usually, you know, if, you know, if like he ever gets too busy, usually his assistant would hit me up and we would kind of like go over everything. You know, I'd get notes from the assistant and we'd have hammer things out and, you know, so that would be that. But several weeks passed and I, I didn't hear anything, not from, you know, my manager or from his assistant. So I sent an email just to follow up, just to be like, hey, you know, just want to make sure that you guys received what I sent. Not even, you know, I didn't, did you read it? But, you know, did you guys receive what I, what I sent? And still nothing, like radio silence. Meanwhile, I'm seeing, you know, my manager on Twitter and he's tweeting about, you know, oh, he's overseas living his best life, you know, and oh, you know what, how horrible it is to, to be rich and beautiful, you know, in Europe or whatever. And after like, not even after hearing from the assistant, I was like, all right, something's up, something's up. Maybe these kids are trying to ghost me or whatever. <laughs> what really though, what really kind of like, I don't know, I don't know how I felt. Like it, it didn't piss me off, but I was just kind of like, all right, something, something is definitely up. New round of nickel fellowship semifinalist because i didn't enter nickel this year 2022 i didn't enter nickel because hey i'm i'm working with the manager i'm working with someone who's going to 
shepherd my career. So, I mean, what do I need? What do I need to win a contest for? And I see this guy on Twitter. And once again, you know, he's with the rest of the managers. Hey, send me your scripts. You know, if you, you know, advance to the semifinals, you know, send me email your script, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, this dude is like reading scripts that other people are like, non-clients are sending him, what about my shit, man? Like, what, what's going on here? So I finally, like, just had to reach out and, and, and be like, yo, dude, what's up? And it wasn't even, yo, dude, what's up? I'm gonna read to you the email that I sent. So I opened just by saying, hey, how are you? Hope you're doing well, and I see that you're living your best life overseas. <laughs> and then I say, I wanted to reach out and get some clarity on the status of our relationship. In the last conversation we had, you said to me that I can obviously write. And that stuck with me because it got me wondering why things haven't progressed much. So far, I've sent you three features, a feature treatment, and a TV pilot. I assumed you were excited to work with me. After all, we spent nearly a year working just on the romantic comedy. But I've yet to go on any general meetings or campaign for any writing assignments or anything like that. Do you believe I'm not ready? Because I believe I am. Early on, you mentioned taking my stuff to people like Will Packer and Kenya Barris, and I was super excited about that because they are the very ones making movies and shows for the same audience I'm writing for. If they were to read my work, I'm almost positive they would get it. And there's a strategy behind what I've been doing. I know horror is not really your thing, but there's a reason I led with Potter's Field. Horror is easy, it doesn't require big stars or budget, translates well overseas, and generally has a healthy return on investment, and why I have several more scripts in different genres. I want to show that I'm thoughtful, versatile, and open to collaboration. And not to sound arrogant, but I know I can write. <laughs> I've been writing and editing professionally for the past 15 years, although hearing you say so certainly validated that I'm not completely wasting my time. Laughing emoji. I'm trying to break into this film business. And yes, I know the business is shitty right now, but I also know that folks are still taking meetings, scripts are still being bought, and deals are still being made. So again, I just want to get some clarity as to what we're doing. Is there any way that we can try to get some things going before the town shuts down before the holidays? Can we discuss the material that I've sent and devise some sort of career strategy? Please let me know. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Cheers, Jay. And what do you know? That lengthy email got a response, and this was the response. Hey Jay, honestly, I've just been so busy with a few films I'm producing and lots of work with my big clients that have been keeping me busy. I think you are talented, but I also don't think I have the bandwidth to help you get where you need or to really roll up my sleeves the way you need to get to that next level. Now I'm not gonna hold y'all. Getting that email, that did piss me off. And it pissed me off for a couple of reasons. I'm not too upset <laughs> or offended that, you know, he had to mention his big clients. Cause you know, I haven't, I haven't done anything. I haven't made this man any money. So of course, you know, he's got to take care of his bread and butter. But that was a little, you know, cause it's just kind of like, oh, you're trying to hammer home the point that, you know, you got to deal with, you know, more important folks than, and hey, that's fine. You know, that's, that's Hollywood. That's the business, right? But I'm pissed off because, well, one, you tried to ghost me. This email comes like three months after the last time you reached out to me, responded to me, communicated with me in any way. And after I tried several times to reach you. So it's pretty obvious that you were trying to ghost me. You were trying to just kind of like sever this relationship and not, not say anything like whatever. And I'm just like, come on. You know, ghosting in any relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or a business relationship, I mean, that's fucking lame. It's lame and, you know, it shows a certain level of cowardice. You know, y'all know I have no problem with confronting people, confronting my issues, because confrontation doesn't always mean a hostile conflict. <laughs> it just means confronting, dealing with the issue at hand. And 
I think I would have respected this a little more if you had responded when I first, like, you know, when I sent whatever, the, you know, the last thing that I sent, if you had responded and said, hey, Jay, you know, we need to talk or this is the deal, this is the situation, I probably would have dealt with it a lot better. Like, I probably, you know, I mean, I would still, still going to be, you know, a little, a little... <laughs> upset and hurt or whatever but at least you know like it's like all right you were man enough to reach out and say hey jay this is how i'm feeling and i don't know if this is going to work out but for like three or so months you you know just being a bit of a bitch <laughs> and um you know you're running around you know overseas you know and 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 living your best life knowing that <laughs> whatever but the second thing, and this is what really, really pisses me off, is the waste of time. Because it's been a year, and in a year's time, you didn't know whether or not you wanted to work with me. You didn't know whether or not you had the bandwidth to help me get to the next level. Like, you knew that shit from the beginning. I don't know what changed. Maybe you took offense to me saying, you know, I think we should go back to an earlier draft or, you know, about... I have no fucking idea, but it doesn't take an entire year to come to that determination. Like not when you like, not when we haven't really tried anything, you see what I'm saying? And so I feel like this has been a year wasted because I didn't query to anyone else. I didn't pitch to anyone else. I didn't send material to anyone else. There was even a, there was even a time where I'd said something silly on Twitter about how someone loved one of my scripts. And he like hit me up just like, who, wait, who, what? Are you making deals without me? And I'm just like, no, you know, that's not what it was at all. He said, oh, oh, cause you gotta, you gotta, you gotta let me know about stuff like that. You gotta include me in stuff like that. And I, I told him, I was just like, look, you know, if, if ever I, you know, finagle some sort of like whatever, you'll be the first person that I contact cause I'm going to need my manager to help work this shit out. So yeah, you know, I felt like, I feel like I wasted a whole fucking year dealing with this individual. And you know, I know some of y'all are going to be like, well, Jay, did you sign any kind of contract or paperwork? And no, I did not. And I know y'all are going to be like, well, that's your bad, you know, and you are absolutely correct. <laughs> and in the beginning, that's what I was looking for. When I asked them, like, what is the nature of our relationship? What are we doing? How are we doing this? Maybe I should have been a little more like blunt and been like, all right, you know, dog, where are the papers for me to sign so that, you know, it's official that I'm your client. But I didn't do that. Like that was my roundabout way of asking for confirmation, a contract, something. So. In the beginning, what I did is I reached out to people that I knew in the industry. I reached out to writers, I reached out to managers that I knew, and I was just like, yo, is this how this works? Because I wasn't dealing with like an, like an agency. I wasn't dealing with like a management agency like, say like Grandview or Heroes and Villains or Zero Gravity or anything like that. You know, this is pretty much, you know, a manager. This is, you know, like a, a one man band so to speak. And, um, you know, I asked around, I'm just like, you know, is this how it goes? Like, am I supposed to look for a contract or what? And everyone, everyone said the same thing. They're just like, yeah, no, this is exactly, that's what it is. That's how it works. There's no contract to sign, you know, unless it's like a big agency, like a big corporate, there's no paperwork or nothing like that. You know, the manager basically is just like, I like your work. I like you. Let's work together to take you to the next level. There's even, it's so funny, there's even, I like this dude so much, uh, Jason Smiley, screenwriter and just, you know, just Hollywood insider, this dude is fucking awesome. He even made a video about like what it's like to obtain representation, a manager, like what it's all like, what it entails. And the ex what he describes in his video was exactly my experience. So when I saw his video, I was like, damn, I was just like, I wish I'd seen this video like a few months ago because this is the exact question that I had. But even like seeing Jason's video kind of confirmed for me that, okay, this is what it is. This is the, the relationship that I'm in. Boom, everything is, is moving the way that it should. So I will, I'll link to Jason's video up here and you'll see that he describes obtaining a manager in the exact way that it happened to me. So yeah, y'all. Yeah, I got that email from uh, from my manager, from my ex-manager, and I didn't even respond. 
I didn't even respond. I thought about just being on some like, oh, wow, okay, well, you know, I see things. But I didn't respond, like, for fucking what? And I'm pretty sure that he's happy that I didn't respond because that's just one less email for me for him to look at. But yeah, you know, that, um, this whole situation has really soured me <laughs> on the whole idea of seeking representation. And I just don't know, like, what the fuck is next. I, I'm going to say something and, you know, at the risk of sounding um, envious or whatever. But, you know, I've read, I've read a lot of, a lot of screenplays from repped writers. Some I know, some I don't. And while, you know, I can say, you know, I can honestly say, you know, I've read some great stuff, some magnificent stuff. I've also read some just absolute garbage, absolute garbage. And to know that these writers who cannot fucking write are being represented, who have an advocate in the industry that's sending them on meetings, that's, you know, campaigning for them to get writing assignments, that's selling their scripts and getting them in rooms. It's just like, I know that I'm better than that. And yet, and I know what you're gonna say, oh, that's just one person and like whatever, but, you know, this is just, it's just been indicative of my experience in, in trying to, in trying to do this through, I, I don't know, I guess like the usual channels. And it's just like, I understand why people get frustrated and why they're just like, we just have to circumvent the gatekeepers somehow. You know, this is what leads to people making their own movies. This is what leads to people just kicking down doors or, you know, breaking windows or smashing walls or doing whatever it takes because the prescribed ways for a lot of us, that's not the way to go. That's not the way to go. So, yeah. I don't know, um, like I said, I don't know what the next steps are. Again, I'm very wary of seeking representation at this point. But you better be goddamn sure that if I do have discussions with any kind of, like, manager or agent or whatever, they have to show me a fucking contract that states that we're going to be working together. Because I'm not going through this shit again. So yeah, kids, that is <laughs> my screenwriter manager experience. I know it's a bit of a downer. I apologize, but hey, I promise to bring you on this journey and to share both my wins and my losses, my dubs and my L's, or I guess my dubs and my dubs, because a dub is an is a loss as well, right? Isn't that what, isn't that? I don't even know, I'm not up on fucking slang like that no more. <laughs> and shit, I mean, yeah, yeah. My dubs and my dubs because I mean, shit. I'm losing, no matter, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing or where I'm coming from, you know, I'm just hitting, you know, wall after wall and notching loss after loss, so. There you have it, kids. There you have it.